Welcome back to the channel, my fellow weather junkies. I'm your host, Greg Majeski, your personal weatherman, bringing you the weather without all that social media hype here on your Monday, September 23rd, 2024. Let's go ahead and see what we're tracking here for today as we're looking at some uh, Texas severe weather, a little pocket of marginal severe weather I have to deal with for today. And there'll be some general thunderstorm threats for some other areas of the country for this afternoon. We're gonna be tracking the development of an upper low. Why are we tracking the development of an upper low? Because it's gonna have a big impact on where our next hurricane is going, which way will Helene go, which is not officially formed yet into a depression. We are expecting that here very soon, but it's very likely to be a hurricane and we'll be tracking somewhere on the Florida Gulf Coast. Now, before we get into everything, into this episode, and we have a lot to talk about. First, I do want to thank all the new subscribers to the channel. And with all the things, everything going on, if you haven't yet subscribed, please consider it. Hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you learn about future content. And if you like what you see, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment down below. It really does help with the YouTube algorithm. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the current satellite picture here across the country. we got some rains here stretching from uh, Missouri, stretching back toward Texas. You see the higher cloud tops with a few of these thunderstorms across portions of Texas. We'll look at that here in just a second. Got some rain showers going into the northeast. Uh, a little bit of activity here out toward the west here from Montana, stretching back toward Idaho. Southwest looking quiet. Most of the southeast also looking pretty quiet here on your Monday. All right, here's that wet weather going up into New England from New York State, stretching down toward West Virginia. Some rains there into Missouri and back through Texas. Some pretty decent rains there. Looking at temperatures in the 70s. Cool back here. Well, look at the Intermountain region. I got a lot of 30s out here. It's freezing temperature there and into Wyoming. So definitely seeing some colder temperatures out here in the West, but uh, pretty mild here up and down most of the East Coast. All right, looking at the watches and warnings out there, pretty quiet there for the moment. Got some, a little bit of uh, flooding here going up near the Texas area. In fact, we're going a little bit closer here as we do have some pretty hefty rains here moving through uh, Dallas, Fort Worth, definitely making for a nasty and just uh, not a good fun rush hour. You know, when you get the rains in these big cities, some pretty good thunderstorms going up near Sulphur Springs, stretching back just to the north of the Waco area here on your Monday. All right, let's look at our weather city of the day. It is going to be Tampa, Florida. It's a nice looking shot. It's going to be sunny. It's going to be kind of hazy out there for today. Now, they will get some of the fringe effects from Helene a little bit later this week. But for today, mostly sunny skies and a high temperature of 92 degrees. Couldn't rule out a stray shower, but for the most part, just sunny and plain old heat. Hey, and if you'd like to nominate your city as the weather city of the day and you know a good webcam in your area, uh, please go take that link, put it down below, and we will consider it for a future broadcast. All right, let's go ahead and uh, shift gears to errors. We're going to take a look at the latest from the storage prediction centers. We're going to be taking that look at activity here for the next three days. We'll go ahead and knock this out first as we're looking at your, your day one outlook here uh, from there. Just that little marginal risk for severe weather. Got that one little pocket there that we're going to have to watch there across uh, portions of Texas. So down here across southwest Texas. Otherwise, just a general thunderstorm threat along that boundary. Uh, looking pretty quiet here for today. The main thing you have to watch out for today is going to be some gusty winds. Uh, in that part of Texas here for this afternoon. How about your day two outlets? Let's go ahead and take a look at that as well. We've got a marginal risk there, a little bit bigger zone that we're going to have to watch here for tomorrow as that system begins to push off toward the east. So we're talking about areas there from Ohio, uh, stretching back into North Alabama, North Georgia, through the Carolinas and through Virginia as we go into your Tuesday. Of course, that is your day two outlook there for Tuesday. And again, we're going to be dealing with some gusty winds. That'll be the pocket there to really worry, worry about in that zone for day two. Day three outlook here, again, just a general thunderstorm threat uh, for a pretty good swath of the country. Uh, again, not looking too bad there as we're gonna be tracking that from areas of heading into the Northeast all the way back here toward the Southwest, but generally right in there. But we're really gonna be focusing our attention on Wednesday on what's gonna be going on out in the tropics. Again, we'll be talking about that in greater detail here in just a second. Let's go ahead and take a look at uh, your excessive rainfall outlook. Again, we're looking at your day one here. This is going to be really uh, picking up here. Uh, this is for today. But as we go through the next few days, that things will begin to change here a little bit. So again, watch what happens here. That's your day one outlook. Day two, we kind of shift that up into the northeast, going from New York State down toward the Carolinas. And then day three, we see that slight risk start to pick up there across Alabama and into uh, portions of uh, Tennessee and Georgia, and that's just not even directly associated with our tropical system uh, that will be coming in uh, as we go into a Thursday coming in out of the Gulf of Mexico. That is going to be our big hazard here as we look at days three through seven. You got that right from basically New Orleans all the way over to Tallahassee uh, as that heavy rain threat will be along there. In fact, I would not be surprised if this gets updated to include a uh, greater area here 
of later today as this thing moves in. It looks like a lot of folks are going to see a, a tremendous amount of heavy rain as this thing moves in, plus a lot of wind. All right, so we're talking about the tropics. Let's get into this. This is what a lot of folks are wa wanting to watch here for today. And we're talking about two areas of disturbed weather. We've got one that is a well out in the Atlantic. You don't have to worry about that one for us for some time. I think we'll be seeing okay out here watching this one. But this is the one uh, of most concern. This will become Helene. Uh, so it's just a question, which one of these systems is going to become Helene first? Probably going to be Helene, and then we'll have Isaac. Isaac will be out in the Atlantic, and we don't have to worry about that one for a while. I think that one actually may stay out in the Atlantic. So... Let's look at the latest satellite imagery on the system right now as we're looking at the infrared imagery. And the Hurricane Hunter aircraft will be heading out there for today. So this is our area of watching. Been watching the thunderstorms generally increasing through the weekend. We're still waiting to get that low-level circulation to kind of lock in there. That's important because once the depression forms, then we can kind of get a better idea of, of how its movements. Not to mention the fact that we're going to have the Hurricane Hunter aircraft going out there today, as I mentioned earlier. They'll do the drop sounds, and that data gets into the models, which will help uh, us get that forecast. This is a unique situation. I'm telling you, I have never seen a situation. like I've seen this in the, in the ocean, but not over land, where we've got a, a tropical low or a, a storm or some sort of kind, and it's influenced with an upper-level low. We're going to show you that on the models here in a second. But again, this thing's sitting over some very, very warm water. Water temperatures down here where this thing is steering is sitting around 86, 87 degrees. It's like bath water down there. So it's got plenty of fuel. Remember, that's what the hurricanes and tropical systems feed off. Is they, they feed off those warm tropical uh, waters and it transforms latent heat that builds up in the tropics and takes it poleward. So that's what we're going to be seeing with the system. Now, as far as the tracks are concerned, here's you got a couple of comparison tracks here. The overnight here from the JEPS uh, track model as well as the, GIA, e, G, the Je JEPS model, the two different, they're both basically in the same same general area. That's what we're looking at and into the Florida Big Bend area. And But there's you got a pretty good wobble there. And the reason why in this is it's going to go back to the northeast and get pulled back to the west. It's just a question of when that takes place, how does it interact with an upper-level low that's going to be diving down uh, into the central portion of the country and how those two systems interact with each other. Now, the forecast trend strength has been a little disheartening for me. It's been going upward, okay? it's uh, Right now, if you were going to take the average looking at all of these, you'd say maybe a strong Cat 2, maybe Cat 3 hurricane as we get toward landfall. The other thing that's a problem for this, especially for the southeast, is that its forward momentum is going to be picking up. So I think it's going to be taking hurricane force winds potentially inland quite a little bit away. So everybody there into Alabama and Georgia, we may get hurricane force gusts getting awfully close to Metro Atlanta. I'm going to show you one of the models on that. So uh, this is going to be knocking out some power, not only for a lot of folks in Florida, but to Alabama and Georgia as well, depending on the track. Again, if it stays further to the east, Alabama, you don't get as much. But if it stays like on the Alabama-Georgia line, you're both going to get hit pretty good with some pretty good gusty winds with that. So let's look at the, the ensemble model again, kind of looking at everything that you kind of just saw there uh, with the two systems. I'm going to track you through this once again. Uh, and watch as this thing begins to move up toward the north, and it's going to curve to the northeast as we go into later in the day on your Thursday. Thursday is going to be the day as we're looking at this thing making a landfall here, probably late in the day on Thursday and moving inland. If you're going to split the difference here on the east end's model, that'd be right along the Alabama-Georgia line as this thing races inland and then gets pulled to the left. That's the interaction with the upper level low that's going to be kind of hanging back there and pull it back. Then it's going to kind of get, 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 kind of get washed out. So Again, that's what we're looking at right there as we go into Thursday and going into Friday. I will say I know that, uh, for example, in Atlanta, they're, uh, they're supposed to have a big baseball series here on Friday. Uh, that's going to be a washout, folks. <laughs> the Braves are not going to be playing baseball on Friday. That is going to be a washout. Probably looking at a doubleheader on that day. Let's go into the hurricane models. We're going to talk about i got two different ones to show you here for to, uh, this morning. We'll get started on this. Uh, let's look at this one. We're looking at the wind profile here as this thing starts to develop here for today. This is one of the hurricane models here. As we go through the day on Tuesday, we're really going to see the thing start to develop here on Tuesday as it uh, rises up toward the north. So as it gets up and it passes right through the pass there between the Yucatan and Cuba, it's really going to start to strengthen pretty rapidly here as we go in throughout the day on Wednesday. And then it looks like as we go into Thursday, that's where we're anticipating it getting close to the coastline. So we're looking at like this is a a little faster than what I have seen, 18Z, so they're like 2 o'clock in the afternoon, a landfall right along the Florida Big Bend. Uh, what's interesting here is you see these winds up here. I see 122 mile per hour winds. I see 123, 129 mile per hour winds getting awfully close to Tyndall, 
which Tyndall Air Force Base, by the way, got wiped out by Hurricane Michael back in 2018. They're still rebuilding that base. And uh, this, uh, although this is not a Cat 5, at least this looks like it could be looking at a strong Cat 3 uh, based off this. Then watch as this thing moves inland. Again, I, again, you folks inland, uh, you're looking at Columbus, Georgia, 96 mile per hour gusts, hurricane force gusts getting into Columbus, Georgia, uh, into that area at Auburn, 79 mile per hour west. You're getting some hurricane gusts here on the south side of Metro Atlanta as this thing moves in. So uh, I could almost compare this to Hurricane Opal, for example, which brought uh, a hurricane force winds well inland. This one can do the same here as this continues to move inland here uh, on your uh, Thursday night and into Friday. So uh, this was a little faster than what I've seen. This kind of spreads those gusty winds into Tennessee. Again, power outages uh, going up into that as this thing gets absorbed into that low uh, as it moves up toward the north. So that's one model. Let's look at another model. Let's do another comparison here on this one. And we'll bring this over. They're both, these are both the zero Z runs on this as again, makes the, makes the run through the pass between Yucatan and Cuba as this thing becomes a hurricane. And as it gets up toward the coast, uh, again, looking at about the same time, about roughly about two o'clock in the afternoon here. And this one's showing 154 mile per hour wind, stronger than the other one. And it gets up to 155, uh, you know, 156. Then we're talking about this joining as a strong Cat 4 uh, making landfall. That would be devastating along that area. There's not a lot of population on that if you're going to get a landfall hurricane, but it's awfully close to Apalachicola here uh, for that on Thursday afternoon. So these models are a little quicker on this. And again, once again, hurricane force winds going into Alabama, Georgia, going up into Columbus. Uh, this might be a little bit further to the east, just slightly. But then again, you're looking at hurricane force gusts here, getting very close through a lot of metro Atlanta here uh, throughout the day, uh, Thursday night and going into Friday morning. So it is going to be uh, a mess there uh, for folks. I got a funny feeling we're going to have a lot of run on grocery stores here across metro Atlanta. That's where I live, by the way. And this spreads the pretty gusty winds across the uh, uh, Tennessee as we go into Friday morning and up into Kentucky by the time we get into Friday morning. So this thing's really going to take off as it's going to get absorbed into that upper level low feature as this thing moves on in. So I'll back that up once again. Again, right now, both these models showing about two o'clock for this thing to move inland and then uh, and then moving into Alabama and Georgia. Again, the track though can shift. We're talking a few of miles here. And here's the reason for this. I want to be very clear on this. We call this the, the Fujiwara effect here on this, okay? This is, an, this is the jet stream. I'm looking right up in the atmosphere as we're going to watch the creation of this, this upper low. Watch that timestamp in the upper right-hand corner as we're going to watch this little piece of energy right here. This energy right here diving down this way, all right? You got our tropical system that's going to be coming up this way. So these things are going to interact with each other, and you're going to see it very, very clearly on this as I take this forward in time. Watch closely. All right, watch this. As this thing dives down to the south, we're going to start pulling on that trop tropical system. That's going to be Helene uh, moving up toward the north there. I'll get my little, little pin here going to northward. This one's going southward. And watch how these two things begin to interact with each other. Okay, I'm going to zoom in here a little bit closer. Uh, watch this here as these things begin to interact with each other. And they're going to be, uh, they almost connect. You can almost see it, how these two lo basically lows, for all intents and purposes, this, is, this will be our hurricane over here, uh, start to pull and kind of rotate around each other. Again, it's called the Fujiwara effect on this, as these things are going to, the, the upper low is going to basically absorb the hurricane into it. So it's going to absorb right in, but it's kind of swings right in, pulls it back to the, back to the west and just absorbs right into the system here as we go into Friday. Uh, with the rains through there. So uh, that's what we're looking at right there. Let me pull back out again as we'll watch this thing go on out. And it kind of spins there and then finally kind of ejects off. Looks like another piece of energy feeds into that thing as that load's going to drag into next week. I mean, look, it's just going to sit there right through Saturday, uh, going through Sunday, just kind of not going to get kicked out because the main jet stream's to the north there. And then we got another little piece of energy uh, that we'll have to watch there going into next week. There, right there, bringing in some more rains there across the mid south as that goes on through uh, going into uh, Wednesday of next week, going into October the 3rd. So that's the upper network dynamics. Again, where that upper low is, any kind of effect on that we're talking can make a difference in the landfall by 100 miles. Now, hopefully, as we get closer to the event and the errors in the model go down, we'll, be able to, we'll lock that down. But anywhere, I'd say from Pensacola at the furthest end, Cedar Key at the longest end on both ends, uh, anywhere in between, just needs to watch us very closely. And that's going to really have an impact on where the heaviest winds will go. Alabama, Georgia, we'll have to watch and see. It's been trending a little bit back, back to the, it's been wobbling back and forth on, on a lot of these model runs, uh, going east, west, and kind of wobbling. So we're still watching this. 
Let's go to the precipitation mode on this. Again, we'll watch this thing as we go through the day. Again, watch this. The European model, I'll say this, as far as its strength, it is not as strong. The European model is lagging behind what the hurricane models and the American GFS models are showing strength. It's showing a landfall here with the pressure down to 982 millibars, where the other ones were much, much stronger you know, uh, than that. So uh, this would be, a, if the European model were to verify, this would be a Category 1 hurricane. That would be a lot less obviously destructive than say what those other models were showing when gusts up to 155 miles per hour like a strong cat 3 cat 4 storm but you clearly can see the the organization or the 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 influence here is our low here's our upper low right here again as these two systems kind of interact with each other and uh, that low is going to pull that system going to pull right back into it and going to absorb it going to eat it right up i mean just like a big vacuum cleaner okay so now, one thing I'll be watching is with the upper level low, obviously, is any kind of wind shear. It does this thing weaken before it makes landfall. But like I said, the European is not as aggressive with the strength with this as we go through time. It'll be interesting to see what happens once we start getting that Hurricane Hunter aircraft data in here. But it looks like that rain's going to linger across the middle of the country for a few days. And uh, this will go into early next week. Then we'll see our next system kind of dive down. This looks pretty robust. Uh, there'll be a pretty good shot of some cool air coming on the back side of this coming into Wednesday, uh, October 2nd. Uh, behind that low as it brings in some uh, rains across uh, Michigan down through Ohio and through Tennessee. Uh, but that's a pretty good cold low, uh, core low there. 546, that's pretty, pretty, pretty low. That's going to be some cooler temperatures there across the Ohio River Valley and even getting into the southeast as we go toward the end of next week. Let's talk rainfall. Again, that's going to be a big part of this as we go ahead and look at this uh, again. As we watch this moisture freed up out of the south, we got that system pushing up toward the east, bringing the rains over the next couple days before it gets to landfall. But then this thing's going to really spread in across the southeast as the moisture gets pulled back uh, to the west. Notice it increases across portions of um, uh, Missouri and into Ar Arkansas and Tennessee. So a big swath of this country, of the, of the south part of the country, is going to get impacted with a lot of heavy rains in here. Uh, this goes out to, for the entire 10 days. Let's go into the southeast region. The only good thing I will say is the south's been dry for the most part. A couple of things I think we can absorb this pretty well, but you're still looking at rainfall amounts. Uh, generally, you know, five to locally heavy areas up to about seven inches of rain. So some very heavy rains across Alabama and Georgia as this system uh, uh, moves inland. And again, it kind of lingers and brings that rain back uh, to, the, to the west here across portions of Missouri and over towards southern, southern Illinois and the southern uh, portion of Indiana. So we got a pretty large uh, population center that's going to be impacted by the interaction of these two storms as we go into this upcoming week. And yours truly is going to stay on top of this for sure. Let's go ahead and take a look at your climate outlook here as we wrap things up on this update here. Again, going from September 28th through the 2nd, most of the country continue with above normal temperatures here, except for areas there in the northwest. And still from coast to coast going through up to October 6th, you're still looking at pretty warm weather here uh, across the country. Precipitation wise, obviously, we're going to have above normal precipitation here. This map might change a little bit today. We'll see how that works out uh, depending on the influence of those two tropical systems. But very dry out in the west, dry up into New England. And as we go out to October 6th, still dry in the west, staying kind of wet here in the east. Again, this could change just a little bit as well, depending on how our tropical system and our low kind of behave with each other. It could change the map here a little bit. All right, so that is your update here for today. I am going to be staying on top of this thing uh, all week long. It's hitting my part of the country where I live and we'll be doing a lot of lives here uh, as we kind of watch this uh, Helene, which could be a major hurricane flooding problem, a lot of wind that's going to be driving inland for a good long distance. Uh, I would tell folks, especially in the southeast, uh, in the mid-south and areas like that, just uh, get prepared for, uh, obviously, the gusty winds. The Gulf Coast, obviously, will be on top of this as well. Now, if you'd like to continue to get these dailies and these updates in your YouTube feed, uh, please help us grow the channel. We've been doing really good. We added like 50 new subscribers last week. Uh, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you're alerted on future content. And if you got any questions or any concerns that I can answer, please post them down below. I have no problem. I love answering uh, people's uh, weather related questions. I'd be more than happy to do that. All right, that is your update here on your Monday. Again, we got a busy week ahead. You guys be good, stay safe, and we'll see you next time. Bye, guys.